getting together on the merry-go-round. So Sue here is bug number two on the outside of the merry-go-round and Mark in the picture is bug number one. Sue will travel in the following path as the merry-go-round spins around, all around the outside like this. While Mark, a little bit closer to the center, will travel like that. So they each have a different radius. Now Mark is wondering why Sue is on the outside of the merry-go-round because he thinks he knows a little physics and he says, well, according to our equation, the acceleration, which is the thrill of the ride, right? The more acceleration you have, the more thrilling the ride is. The acceleration is V squared over R. So according to Mark, my acceleration or the acceleration experienced on this ride is inversely related to R. In other words, as R gets bigger, the acceleration gets smaller. So why would you want to be on the outside? Because that's where the ride is less thrilling. You want to be on the inside where the acceleration is large. Sue, however, uses the other equation, four pi squared r over t squared. And she states that according to this equation, acceleration is directly related to r. The bigger r is, the bigger the acceleration is. So she's saying as R goes up, acceleration also goes up. Now, they both represent the same thing. It's just two different ways of calculating the centripetal acceleration. So somebody's got to be right and somebody's got to be wrong. Now, if we look at the ride itself, the merry-go-round itself, if I look at Sue's ride versus Mark, Sue follows this dotted line along the outside. She describes a very, very big arc as she moves around in one complete circle. Mark, of course, is closer to the center, and he will only go along that smaller circle path in the middle. The key to both of these people is they're both on the same ride, and the time it takes to go round for both is the same they both will experience the same period of rotation because they're on the same ride. So if you look at Sue's equation, four is obviously constant, pi is constant, r is not constant for either of them, but t is constant. So Sue's equation looks like this. Your centripetal acceleration is related to some constant times r. So if everything in this equation is constant except for r, it seems likely that Sue is right. Well, what about Mark? Well, we know R is not constant. What about V? V on the top of his equation. Well, we know that velocity is distance over time, and the distance around a circle is 2 pi R. And we know they both take the same amount of time to go around that circle. Well, you can see from the picture that Sue's circle is much larger than Mark's circle. So she'll go a bigger distance in the same amount of time. So that means her velocity is bigger. So what Mark said is actually incorrect, because even though he's right about the relationship between AC and R, as R goes up, AC goes down, according to that formula, the other thing he's not considering is that as R goes up, as the circle gets bigger, the velocity also gets bigger. And velocity is squared, so that's going to dominate. So there's a lot going on with Mark's equation. He forgot to factor in the velocity of each of the uh, experiences. So in this case, Sue is correct.